and welcome to my first hair tutorial ever since I was literally such an awkward bean in high school. Today I'm really excited to partner with Aveda to show you guys a couple of the hairstyles that I wear when I don't just give up and throw my hair into a top knot like I do every day when I'm not filming a video. The first hairstyle I'm going to show you is this effortless, whatever the heck that means, beachy wave type of look that also happens to be heatless. So here is where we are starting. As a base for all of these looks, we're, ah, we're gonna be applying, <laughs> we're gonna be applying, nailed it, Aveda's Damage Remedy to freshly washed hair that's still a little bit damp. This is a nice little leave-in treatment that's gonna help tame down any frizz and split ends that I have from my hair being lightly fried by dyeing it about six different times. So to get started on these waves, basically I'm gonna be creating two Dutch braids going down either side of my head. Now it's really important, you do not want to do this on wet hair. Repeat after me, do not do this on wet hair. Trust me, high school me has tried this hairstyle many a time with completely soaked hair, but once you put super wet hair in braids, it's just never ever gonna dry. Like if you left those braids in forever, you could be on your deathbed and those braids would still be wet. So make sure you are starting with hair that is the slightest, slightest bit damp. I think you guys might know how to do a Dutch braid, but we're gonna start with a little section in the front. If you start with a really big chunk, when you take the braids out, your face framing curl won't be as nice and tight. So we really wanna start with small sections here. I don't know if you guys can see what's going on here, but I'm crossing each outside piece underneath the inside piece instead of over it like you would in a normal braid or a French braid. I'm braiding this front section like two or three times before I start adding in little pieces of hair from the side. I'm also trying as I do this to keep the Dutch braid as close to my hairline as possible because that'll help the curl pattern look nice and defined right by your hairline instead of having this awkward straight bit and then starting to get curly, if you know what I'm saying. I'm also doing this braid relatively tightly because I want that really curly defined pattern. If you want more of a relaxed wave, you could also tossle your your braids a little bit so that you end up with a looser curl in the end. And I am going right down to the bottom because if possible I want to avoid any awkward straight bits at the end. Then I'm going to secure this. I don't have enough hands for this. I'm using these small ones instead of a traditional big elastic like this because these can kind of leave a big straight section at the end of your hair because they take up so much space, but these tiny ones don't take up much hair real estate at all, so they're not gonna leave your hair as dented. So here is the completed braid on one side. I'm just gonna repeat that on the other side as one does. All right, and our two boxer braids are complete. Honestly, I really like this hairstyle just for the daytime when I'm not even trying to do curls. So I'll probably wear this all day, go to sleep, and then the next day when my hair is completely dry and this is super set, we're gonna take it out. Heatless waves are like a box of chocolates. You never know quite what you're gonna get. So it's always exciting tomorrow to see whether this actually turned out well. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Good morning, folks. Wow, don't you love it when you roll fresh and ready out of bed with a full face of makeup and in your outfit for the day? Me too. I assume you guys know how to take out a braid, but you know, you just take out that elastic. As I go, I'm just gently separating these strands. I'm not like ripping them out so that I don't destroy that curl structure that we worked so hard on. And since the asymmetrical look is really in for fall, winter 2018, we're just gonna leave this as is. Anna Wintour is quaking. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna take out the other side now. All right, we already have so much texture going on. I'm gonna take a little bit more of the Damage Remedy and kind of just use it as a little finishing cream. I just rubbed a little bit on my hands and I'm gonna gently curl the bottoms of my hair and zhuzh it around a little bit. And you could totally stop here if you wanted to go for a more voluminous look, but I honestly have too much hair for my own good. My hair is so thick. So to tame down this volume a little bit, I'm gonna take two little sections. They're right behind my face framing sections because I'm gonna leave those out. Um, twist them back and secure them with two bobby pins in a simple little cross. Here is the final look, ready to be shown off with some obnoxiously self-indulgent beauty guru style posing. Next up, we are gonna be breaking out the curling iron for my go-to loose waves. So I'm starting off the second look same way as before, freshly washed hair with a little bit of Aveda's Damage Remedy run through the ends. This also has a built-in heat protectant, so we are all good to go on the hair defense front. I don't do anything too crazy sectioning wise. I know I've seen tutorials with like 50 different sections and that's just too much for me. So I'm pinning up loosely the top half of my hair, get a little bit of man bun action to keep it all out of the way. I'm taking my one inch curling iron and just taking random sections of hair. There's really not too much of a rhyme or reason to this whole method. I'm taking pieces of hair that are about yay big, I would say that's about an inch, an inch and a half, and wrapping it around the curling iron. 
And after I let out my curl, I always like to give it a nice little cuddle because you know your curls need a little bit of love too but also for the practical reason that your hair forms its structure while it's cooling down and not while it's heating up so holding it while it's cooling down definitely helps your curls stay in longer to explain my super advanced method a little bit more I'm curling away from my face and as I go around I'm not laying my hair super ribbon flat I'm keeping my grip at the end so it kind of twists around the barrel a little bit and that'll help you get a much more natural beachy looking curl rather than those tight ribbon curls that look a little bit faker. Time to unleash the top section. Once I get to the top section, the first part that I always curl are these little face framing bits. Honestly, the rest of your hair can look pretty jank, but as long as your face framing bits look good, you're good to go. I don't hold these front sections in the curling iron too long because I don't want them to be super duper tight curls. I kind of want them more relaxed than the rest of my hair. And then we're just gonna finish up taking random sections around the top of my head. Waiting for my hair to curl. Yeah. And you know, if you mess up a curl, like this one turned out a little bit strange, we can just go back with the curling iron and kind of fix it up at the bottom. There we go, good as new. All right, we are all done curling and magically all of my limbs have emerged from this experience without any curling iron burns, which trust me, doesn't happen all the time. You could totally stop here if you wanted more of a smooth salon looking curl, but today I wanted to rough them up a little bit, make them look more worn in and casual. And like I didn't just spend the past half an hour of my life curling my hair. The real question is why do we have to spend so much effort making our hair look effortless? That's something to think about. Next up, I'm gonna spritz in some of Aveda's texture tonic. Ah! which will help me get a little bit more of that beachy texture. And now I'm just gonna finger comb through my hair to try to get those curls a little bit more loose and beachy. That is the finished look. This is pretty much what I wear whenever I'm filming videos, taking Instagram posts, generally trying to not look like a potato. Before I go, I wanted to show you guys a couple different ways that I style these curls into something a little bit less basic. As you guys know, I love me a good scrunchie or a good hair bow. So this is very simple, but I'm literally just pulling the two sections of my hair back, leaving out those face framing sections, and then securing them in the back with a little hair scrunchie. This is obviously so simple, but it makes me feel so cute and like straight out of the 50s. You could also do the same half updo action with a gold clip for this kind of bougie beach time look. Next up, I have a little bit more of a spunky look, again with a scrunchie. This time my sections are gonna be a little bit bigger. I'm not gathering the entire top half of my hair I still wanna leave some volume down here, but I still want enough hair to be able to make this ponytail. I'm just wrapping the scrunchie around twice. I don't want it to be too tight because otherwise it'll look a bit too high up there. I want more of like a relaxed look. So here is our second half updo. I feel like the comic relief younger child in a 90s family sitcom. If you happen to have a silk scarf or bandana lying around, they're super easy to find at thrift stores. You can do a simple low ponytail and then tie the scarf around to add some detail. And lastly, you could try pinning back a bit of hair with some clips. If you don't have embellished ones like this, you could totally paint regular bobby pins with gold nail polish or your favorite color for a really similar look. All right, and those are all of my looks that I have for you guys today. If you're sad this video is over and for some reason, wanna see more of this face, I made some more videos over on Aveda's channel. I'll have their channel linked below, so feel free to check them out if you want. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.